Well, hi there. I'm here today with a Gaboon Viper. Uh, I'm also here today with Timmy, whose job it is to keep all of my limbs on my body. Uh, and I, I say that in all seriousness. This is my very favorite snake, um, which puts it up there as being one of, if not my very favorite of all animals. Um, I've uh, actually, since we've been here at Nerd, I've interacted with several of my favorite animals in the world, and this one's right at the top of that list. I love them. They terrify me. It, this is the most incredible and I think impressive looking snake that there is. Um, that heavy body is amazing. The patterns on them. Uh, the Dumeril's boa is one that has patterns that kind of remind me of this. They're just unbelievably beautiful. Unbelievably beautiful. And then there's one thing uh, that makes vipers definitely my favorite group of snakes, and that is their incredible large triangular heads. They're very, very wide, extremely wide heads, because they've got some massive venom glands in them. There is no snake in the world for its length that has a head even close to as big and wide as the Gaboon Viper. It's just unbelievable. So big, so impressive. It houses some of the most terrifying venom in the world to me. Uh, because there are, there are a lot of venomous animals out there that are going to give you a really bad day or, or week. You know, you might, you might spend some time in the hospital. It's going to cost you a fortune. They might even kill you, right? And this is one that absolutely can kill you. But even under the best of circumstances, you're probably going to need to have something amputated. And that is, that is serious venom. That, that venom is delivered by the longest fangs possessed by any snake in the world. And, and this is a viper, and, and that's what allows it to have such long fangs. Those fangs fold so that they're, they're not straight and erect all the time. And when they open their mouth, they extend those fangs almost out straight, and they can deliver a really devastating bite. This snake is one that will bite and hold on for a while and give you a dose that you definitely don't want. And, uh... The male's talking. <laughs> this is this is just the most impressive and in some ways terrifying snake in the world, and I love them. As you know, we recently covered the King Cobra on this channel, which is an unbelievable snake. So intelligent, the longest of all venomous snakes. I think that though, when we're talking about the coolest snake, this is it hands down. That's my personal opinion. But I have a really big question. Some people do keep these Gaboon Vipers as pets. In fact, a lot of people. Sometimes kids will buy them. And, and the question is, and you may already be suspicious what the answer might be, the question is, is the Gaboon Viper the best pet snake? Nope. No, it isn't. It is not. Not at least if you're opposed to having your limbs amputated. But let's score it anyway, just in case you're not as possessive of your extremities as I am. Which means we'll have to score it based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the Gaboon Viper a score of one out of five, which is really high considering how devastating this snake can be. Uh, that's a better score than we gave the King Cobra, if you didn't notice. I would still say avoid handling them as much as is humanly possible. What you can see is advice I'm not taking very well today, but I'm also not touching it. I'm trusting Timmy, who is one of the few experts in the world that I would trust to have me this close to a Gaboon Viper. He knows what he's doing and he's got the right tools. The reason that they score better than a King Cobra is because they aren't as fast when it comes to moving their whole body. Now, I will tell you this snake has probably the fastest of all snake strikes. So when it comes time to deliver, uh, it can deliver in a hurry, but it's not gonna close the ground on you in the way that a King Cobra can. 
It's also not nearly as long, right? It's really difficult to manipulate a king cobra, even using a snake hook or tongs, in a way that it can't double back on you because it is more than twice as long as your snake hook. This snake can be safely moved using proper tools. In fact, you know, this snake is not any harder to move around than a blood python. You're gonna see in a lot of ways, I'm gonna compare this to a blood python. This is the crazy man's blood python, absolutely. Uh, the biggest thing about these guys is that they, I mean, you see how he's sitting right now and he's not moving? That's what they do. And, and they can do that literally for weeks at a time. Just hold perfectly still and wait for something to get too close and then it's time for food. And, and so when you have a Gamun Viper, most of the time what you're going to see it doing is this. And it is going to seem like I can do anything I want to with this snake. In fact, you can scoop it up with a hook and, and grab the back third of the snake with your hand and you're going to be, hey, this snake is never going to do anything. This snake is just laid back. It might hiss at me a little bit, but my blood python does that. Heck, my hognose snake does that. And it can lull you into a false sense of security. However, you know, once you make a mistake, once you get too confident with it, too comfortable with it, and you put yourself within strike range, it can hit you so hard and so fast there will be absolutely nothing you can do about it and it will grab on, it will hold on tight, it will inject you with a pile of venom. When you show up at the hospital, you're gonna be like, I've been bitten by a gaboon viper. And they're like, you, uh, is that a monkey? I don't, what are you talking about? A, I don't even know what a gaboon viper is, right? Your, your local vet might not know what a gaboon viper is, let alone your doctor, right? They don't know what a gaboon viper is. And you're gonna be like, I need antivenom for a gaboon viper. And they're gonna be like, oh, I don't, I don't know what that is. And even if they had antivenin, they still might cut off whatever got bitten. All right, so gear up, right? It's a bad, bad, bad day, real bad day. Uh, you'll never be the same, right? This, this snake is going to begin destroying tissue so quickly, and they're, they're gonna have to act very, very quickly just to save your life, your arm, that's gone. That was gone the moment those fangs got embedded in you. And they can just lull you into a false sense of security. But as I said, they're actually, for a venomous snake, easy to move and in some ways that makes them more dangerous. Just don't ever get too close. I'd like to say uh, a special thanks to our patrons at Patreon who made it possible for us to come here and visit Nerd and also whose contributions would pay for my prosthesis should I get bitten by this snake at any point during this video? Thank you. When it comes to care, we give the Gaboon Viper a score of three out of five, which you know is largely due to the fact that this snake is not any harder to keep really than is a blood python. They need temperatures that are a little bit cooler than a lot of snakes. You need to be careful about hydration with these guys, um, which actually is a good reason to soak them, which makes it so you might need to move them more often, which I've already told you you should try to avoid. It, this is kind of a problem, right? This is kind of a problem that hydration can be an issue for these guys because it's gonna put you in a little more danger. Generally speaking, what I would recommend that's very different than what I would recommend for a blood python is have an enclosure with a divider in it so that you can put a divider in before you open the enclosure that allows you to have the snake on one side and you can mess around on the other side. And then when you catch the snake on the other side three weeks later when it decides to move, you put the divider back in, you clean the other side where it's been. That is the biggest difference. Other than that, it's fairly typical snake stuff. They need substrate. They need an enclosure that is escape proof. Now this snake of snakes is not a great escape artist because it's so thick, right? This is a, a wide snake. It's got a big head. Unlike the King Cobra, you know, this isn't gonna get out of just anything, but it is a snake and snakes are great at getting out of things. So you've gotta have a great lid. It is a very strong snake. So, you know, any kind of lid that isn't like a sliding lid it's probably gonna be able to push its way out. And so, don't do that. This snake is uh, not the kind of snake you want crawling into bed with you, right? It's nice and warm in there, delightful. It's a place a snake is loved, loved to be, right? But you, you wouldn't like that. So, don't, don't make that a possibility. I'd recommend something with no lid at all and, and sliding front doors that you can secure with cabinet locks and just never, never get lazy about that. You know, they're gonna need heat, not as much as a lot of snakes, but you know, keep that controlled with a thermostat. You know, hides, though most of the time this snake is gonna hide in plain sight. And uh, some leaf litter, right? If you wanna have no idea where this snake is at any time, put some leaf litter in there, that's where they come from. You, you, that snake will become invisible and you will get to show people, look at how amazing this snake is. However, 
If that's why you want one of these, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. This snake also has a fairly slow metabolism. Like I said, they don't move. And so very much like blood pythons, again, you're gonna not feed them all that often or they're gonna have a real problem with becoming obese. So keep meals not nearly as big as this snake could possibly swallow because it's huge, right? It has an enormous head, super wide body. I mean, this snake, you know, a decent sized gaboon viper can take down an adult rabbit, right? But that's not a good meal for a gaboon viper. That's how you end up with a short-lived giant obese gaboon viper. If you want a healthy, Gaboon Viper, like the ones they have here at Nerd, you're gonna wanna keep those meals smaller and, and fairly infrequent. And when you are feeding it, use the longest tongs you can find because this snake will be doing nothing. And then when it strikes at prey, it is gonna cover a huge amount of distance so fast there's nothing you can do about it. So make sure you're well outside of that strike range and it's farther than you think. When it comes to hardiness, we give the Gaboon Viper a score of three out of five. These guys are pretty darn solid. You know, a lot of snakes are pretty solid. These guys are gonna be a little more temperamental. Care's gonna be a little more important with these guys. You could lose one more easily than, than some other uh, snakes. But, you know, as long as you're giving them appropriate care, they should do really well for you. Just make sure that they don't become dehydrated or overheat. Also, extreme obesity, as we said before, that can lead to a premature death. These guys, they do pretty well but uh, they can be a little bit more temperamental than other snakes. When it comes to availability, we give the Gaboon Viper a score of two out of five. The reality is though, I mean, these are actually fairly easy to get. Um, they're not quite as available as rattlesnakes, but there are a lot of people that breed them and really not that many people that are right for them. Uh, so there's usually quite a few available. If you look online, you can find a Gaboon Viper. Uh, you know, most expos that sell venomous reptiles, they're gonna have Gaboon Vipers and that's, madness if you ask me because of all the venomous snakes that you can get I would say mambas are a worse idea and cobras are a worse idea and then this uh, then this this is the one uh, this is this is a, a serious serious snake for very few people you know and I've I've heard tell that you know sometimes you'll see kids walk away at expos with a Gaboon Viper. That's madness, right? That is, that is madness, right? Why not just give them a revolver? When I say that they're fairly available, one of the things about them is they produce a bucket load of babies, which is unsurprising because their body is huge, right? So they can hold a ton of them. So, you know, if you just have one person breeding it, one female Gaboon Viper, you know, she might drop 50 or more babies all at once and then then you've got to find 50 or more responsible homes for Gaboon Vipers. Good luck. Good luck, right? And that might explain why sometimes you'll hear stories about kids walking away at expos with a Gaboon Viper. Because if you've got somebody who's got 100 Gaboon Vipers, right, they might get a lot less discriminating about to whom they should sell a Gaboon Viper. Unless you are seriously prepared for a Gaboon Viper, no matter how inexpensive it is, no matter how available it is, no matter how stinking rad it is, because you're not going to find a cooler snake. You know, make a, make a wise choice here, because this can be a really bad decision. Better than getting a tiger. Just FYI. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Gaboon Viper a score of 3 out of 5. The reality here is a snake, because of supply and demand, could potentially not be very expensive at all, which is crazy. If you need permits, the permitting can cost you quite a bit more, and I'm not really factoring that into this score. The enclosure that you need should be a good one, and because these snakes can get so large, it should be fairly good size. And like I said, I'd recommend one that has a divider that you can insert from the outside without accessing the snake. Make sure you can lock down this enclosure so it doesn't get out. But, you know, all, all of the enclosure stuff, because these snakes are so inactive most of the time, it doesn't need to be huge. And so it's actually fairly affordable to get the entire setup that you would need. You just need heat tape, thermostat, water bowl, substrate, hide. Fairly normal snake stuff. Just make sure that it is escape proof. And, and then, you know, like I said, the snake is not that expensive, which I think is a problem. And so overall, we give the Gaboon Viper a score of 2.4 out of 5 which is a really high score considering what a horrible pet I think this is for almost everybody. 
right? This, this should show you, once again, kind of like with the rattlesnake, that, you know, what really matters here isn't the overall score. That, that isn't the score to help you determine, oh, because it got a high score, it's for me. You need to go through each category and say, can I do this, right? Am I ready for this? Is this really what I want? Because this is, this is a long-term commitment. You know, you gotta, you gotta look into the fact that, like, for the next 20 years, you're gonna be responsible for a Gaboon Viper. And, and you're going to have to be interacting with it on some level several times a week, right? And, and you know, sometime, I'm gonna have members of my family and people who aren't as competent as I am with a Gaboon Viper. Do I feel confident and comfortable having that animal in my home? Do I feel confident and comfortable interacting with that animal? Am I prepared to accept the consequences should the worst happen? If the answer is no, this snake isn't for you. It straight up is not for you. Don't get one, right? This is, this is one of the worst ideas that you could possibly have if you're just thinking, I want a snake. Even if you're just like, I want a wicked cool snake, right? There are, I mean, a rattlesnake is a much, much better idea. A bad idea, but a much better idea because you show up at the hospital with a rattlesnake bite, they're gonna get you taken care of. It's just gonna cost you $100,000. This one will cost you $100,000 an arm and you still might die. Right? You still reasonably might die. This is a really, really serious snake. I can't emphasize that enough. It's not for everyone. It's not for very many people at all. So be smart about this and maybe just enjoy them at zoos, here at Nerd, because when I see this snake, it gives me chills up and down, but I don't want one. However, I should give you a chance to hear from somebody who does, and so uh, I'm going to turn over the time to Kevin, who keeps these snakes, who I think is one of the few people that is the right sort of person to own a Gaboon Viper. This is a Gaboon Viper. Gabunicus. Uh, this is a fantastic uh, animal if you are experienced at keeping things like this, an uh, incredibly hot animal. So Gaboon Vipers uh, are as exotic as you, you can get for a lot of the different uh, terrestrial vipers. So this is a land-based viper, it has a heavy body mass. It would naturally, it comes from Africa and it's, you know, it's tropical. So it's gonna live in these uh, forests where the, they blend in with the leaf litter. So they have very cryptic camouflage and uh, they're largely an ambush hunter, which basically means that they crawl around the forest floor until they find a rodent trail or some kind of uh, evidence that there's an activity of, of a rodent and they set up shop and they'll basically, a lot of these rodents, let's say if we have a, a rat colony, a rat warren, the, the rats will go back and forth. They'll come along, they find one of these uh, paths and they set, set themselves up and then they just are lost in the uh, dead foliage and they just sit and they'll sit motionless, sometimes for days. Uh, this is also very simple, similar to uh, Crotalus horridus, which is a timber rattlesnake, which you know these animals are ambush hunters, uh, not active foragers. They'll move around until they find something that uh, interests them and then they just go quiet. So they're very good at conserving their energy. This animal has serious venom. This, this venom is just melt you and ruin your life. Uh, they have massive, massive fangs. These have some of the largest fangs on record. Um, little things that are misleading about this animal. This animal can appear very, very calm and uh, they're very sedentary. And this is when we uh, get an incorrect idea of the animal and uh, its, its nature. And as, as tractable as they can be, they have an incredibly fast strike. And the strike is faster than a human reaction. And the venom that can be delivered is horrific, uh, just cause massive damage. So this is nothing to be uh, trifled with or, or disregarded. And uh, this is a beautiful male. Uh, we basically high beat. We're just gonna enjoy them and uh, this is an animal I would never want to really grab behind the head so if I were to grab behind the head this animal very quickly will start doing a psychotic set of motions where they actually try to stab whatever is restraining it because that's once again it's a defensive type uh, situation where the animal feels like it's being predated and uh, that's not a good thing. So, and what they do is, once you grab my head, they're going to start throwing their body all around, and they're going to uh, potentially damage your spine. So, even though this animal is 
to be uh, absolutely respected, you have to uh, also realize that an animal like this, heavy body with this quick movement can also damage its spine because animals are all spine. So they actually, they're incredibly fragile. So if we were to drop this animal and mistreat it, I could uh, injure the spine, I could do something that basically caused uh, partial paralysis or absolute paralysis and ruin this animal's life. But the, the care of these is, uh, they're, they're, they're straightforward. Uh, you have to be very uh, aware of their water intake. Uh, these animals can easily get dehydrated. They don't necessarily view a water dish as a vessel to drink. So uh, an animal like this might be a good idea when you're feeding defrosted rodents is to blast that rodent, which basically inject that rodent with a whole bunch of water. And then when the animal eats, that animal's getting the luxury of being super hydrated in the meal. Because every time an animal metabolizes its food, so it's digesting its food, it becomes a big physiological uh, effect on that animal. And it, it, it has to uh, go through a big change. There's fats and all these different things that start uh, going into the bloodstream. The heart enlarges, they go through this big process. Their body temperature, their core temperature, average mean temperature actually goes up as they're digesting this animal. So making sure that that animal is properly hydrated is critical. If I were to take this animal, feed it a large meal, and dehydrate it, uh, as the animal is metabolizing everything, it's drawing out the nutrients, but it still needs to get it out of its gut system. And these animals don't move a lot, so a lot of times what they don't do is they don't just defecate regularly, and sometimes things will sit inside them. And if I dehydrate the animal, the bolus item or the contents in his GI system will actually start pulling or they want to, you know, they need moisture for that to go through the tract of the system and eventually for that animal to pass it. So if I dehydrate the animal, that material actually can uh, just start to harden up and locate in the system and become a problem for the animal to pass. And what happens is basically it almost adheres to the GI tract. And uh, once that happens, the animal can talk. So, so if I have all this uh, organic material inside an animal like this, that, anal that actually stuff will actually poison the animal. So you wanna make sure these guys are hydrated. So one good uh, rule you can do is periodically, once a week, you could take an animal like this, remove it from its enclosure, put it into a very, very shallow soak. And a shallow soak would mean that the water would be room temperature. So something like this, I'd probably say like 82, 84 degrees. Bring that water level up about a third of the body and let that animal soak for 15, 20 minutes, even a half hour. Get a good drink, put it back in the cage. And if you're really diligent, you only have to keep a little small water dish in the cage. And then when you're keeping uh, things like bittus, so you know rhino vipers and puff adders and, and gaboons and stuff, uh, some keepers actually move them from the cage and this is like a, a weekly thing that they'll do. And that way we're getting uh, big drinks. but. As tough of an animal it is, they require a little bit of uh, technique and a little bit of know-how because in some ways their husbandry is a bit fragile and you have to be really aware of these things. Do not just decide because there's a water dish in the cage that the animal is absolutely just going to view that as a water dish. Things like chameleons and stuff like that, they don't understand what a water dish is. So we have to use our brains and then adjust our husbandry to be successful with things like this. But once again, this is not a good pet species. It's only designed to be kept by qualified experts that use tools and respect uh, an animal like this. They're incredibly fast and they're very, very misleading. And I'm very comfortable with an animal like this, but uh, it's not a comfort where I'm gonna like overstep and just start petting it. Even though I could pick this animal up and, and do you know, remarkable things with it, you know, to get uh, YouTube hits or whatever, I would be misrepresenting uh, the danger of the animal and uh, the validity of what it actually is capable of doing. So I have to just kind of like respect the animal, enjoy the animal, because we're basically doing this to enjoy these animals and be responsible and then project that level of care to other would-be keepers and uh, set a good standard. As always, like and subscribe. Hope to see you real soon. I know this is one of Clint's uh, must play with animals and we're gonna let Clint play with this and then a female that uh, we produced here at Nerd. So hopefully you enjoy that. So I, I, you know, I'm not gonna do anything I don't feel comfortable with, but 
honestly, a lot of it is I have a lot of confidence in Timmy. Am I in? You're in. Let me. You're just look stubborn. how kind. I'm just stubborn. Look I'm just how beautiful. Stubborn. It is. It's just a big, cute cat. You're absolutely right, and it's a way better pet than a great white shark. Handleability, care, hardiness. Oh, nerds, I don't even do this hand. <laughs> <laughs> Puffy glands <laughs> full of venom. And I don't want to see them contract. <laughs> no. Oh dear. I'm gonna scoot out of here. <laughs> I'm gonna slide it forward a little bit. <laughs> I've, been, I've been holding my breath. <laughs> Yo, Timmy, do you want me to put this on the floor? Hello, everyone. I am no. Yo, relax. When it comes to care, we give the Gaboon Viper a score of three out of five. <laughs> Clint. Yo. Clint. Yo.